Hi, this is Louise Bibby from getupandgoguru.com and welcome to part four in our series on living powerfully with CFS. In our previous video, we looked at the, well, the fact, I believe it's a fact, that uh, we may not be able to control much in our lives with CFS, our physical body, our symptoms, our financial situation, our environmental situation. There must, there's a lot of things that we can't control or we feel that we can't control, but we always can control our thoughts. And as I said previously, you may disagree with that. And if you do disagree with that, have a look at the previous video and you may get some um, uh, openings into how you can look at that a little differently. And you may completely disagree with me, and that's fine too. That's okay. Uh, but following on from that, that we can control our thoughts. Key number four to living powerfully with CFS, I believe, is that is to focus on what we can control as opposed to what we can't. Or in other words, focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. Now, I often use that language, the doing language, like what you can't do, as opposed to what you can do. Uh, and I realise that's partly because I am a doer. <laughs> I am someone who likes to take action and uh, frustrates me not to be able to take action. Uh, and that may be the case with a lot of people with CFS. My inclination is to believe that it is the case with most people with CFS, or most that I've come across anyway. Most of them are, most people with CFS I have come across, and this is just my personal experience, are people who are very much type A personalities who are ambitious and who like to take action and it frustrates them greatly not to be able to take action in the areas of their lives that they are passionate about. So it's important for us to learn to focus on what we can control and what we can do as opposed to what we can't control and what we can't do. Because when we feel that we are out of control, we feel overwhelmed. And when we feel we can't do things, it's often when we become overwhelmed. So one of the keys to stepping out of that overwhelm and having us living and feeling as if we are in control of our lives to a certain, a certain um, extent is to focus on what we can control. And I'm now going to change into the language of doing, uh, so taking action. So focusing on what we can do as opposed to what we can't do. Now I know when I'm laying in bed in the midst of a relapse that I absolutely focus on what I can't do. I get frustrated, I, I go through the things in my head that need to be done, that aren't getting done, and and it just, it can often get me more and more frustrated because, well, in my life at least, um, there's always something to be done, uh, whether it's just keeping a household, uh, doing my mothering duties, uh, doing some of the volunteer work that I do within uh, my daughter's school, uh, or working on my blog and website and business. Uh, there's always something to be done. And when I'm having a really bad day or a really bad year, like I had last year, 
it's so easy to um, really get stuck in that thinking of of what I can't do I can't do this and I can't do that and I can't do this and I can't do that and and it becomes frustrating and it, and it makes us feel like we're um, useless uh, powerless helpless and that we're not able to contribute to the world in the way that we'd like to. And that's not a nice feeling. But focusing on, on all that stuff, it, it doesn't leave us feeling empowered. It doesn't give us power. And it's not, it's not productive. Once again, I'm focusing on on uh, on outcomes, but it's not. It's not serving us by focusing on what we can't do. So, how do we focus on what we can do? Well, it depends really where you are in your illness, uh, what you can do, and. Some of you may be listening to this or watching this and saying, yeah, easy, easy for you to say, you're not, you're not bedridden. And no, I'm not currently, but I have been. And no, you can't do that much. It's not like you can get up and uh, make dinner or even have a shower in those times. Uh, but it goes back to an earlier uh, video in this series, number two, is that one thing we can do is control our thoughts. So even if you are that low that you can't get out of bed, I mean you may be that low that you can't think very well, like that it's really affecting your, your memory and concentration. But when you are thinking clearly, uh, or semi-clearly, you can focus your thoughts on, I would suggest in that circumstance, I would suggest focus your thoughts outwards. Focus your thoughts out onto uh, something that's going to distract you. And I use this example a lot um, in my blogs and everywhere, really, because it's such a powerful thing in my life. But I focus my, I distract myself. I distract myself when I'm laying in bed and I am so tired, so exhausted, that I can barely move, but I can't sleep. And they are the most dangerous times for me um, in regards to going down the negative spiral of thoughts toward depression. And so I distract my thoughts away from those inward thoughts and I, I distract my attention outwards. And the best way for me to distract my attention outwards is to listen to a podcast or an audiobook or the radio. Now I love my music and it plays a part as well. Uh, if I can distract my attention outwards by putting on some positive, bouncy, I don't know, any music that uplifts me, that can help, but I often find when I'm really in those low periods that the music doesn't even help me because uh, it's not enough of a um, attention grabber and it often <laughs> sings about things that make me feel sadder <laughs> uh, and taps into my emotions. So I'm not saying ignore your emotions. It's very important to acknowledge your emotions and to feel your emotions. Um, but, but right at these points when you're feeling so low, it's a matter of snapping yourself out of it. Um, and you hear that all the time, like I bet people have said that to you. I just snap out of it. I'm not talking like that. I just mean, I mean there is a structure for this that I use. And it's, it's the structure of these videos that, I'm, that I'm, I'm recording right now. I say to myself, okay, it is as it is choose it, now what? And then I say to myself, you can't control much, but you can control your thoughts. And then I say, okay, so 
focus what on what you can control, not what you can't. So when I th start hearing myself thinking of things I can't do or things I can't control, I literally say to myself in my head and sometimes out loud, stop, stop. That is not serving you. Those thoughts are not serving you. And I, I'm probably firmer with myself than I am with anyone else. Uh, but that's what I say. And I say to myself, when I'm in the complete overwhelm and I'm really, really ill, I sometimes have to bring it back to, okay, so what can I do in the next 15 minutes? Break it down into 15 minute chunks. That's what I need to do sometimes. And I sometimes, what is the best thing for me to do right now that will serve me? And sometimes that is sleep. Sometimes, well, often it's, it's that sort of thing when, you, when you're at that stage of your illness. But when you're at the stage of the illness that I am at now, uh, I can break it down into you know, half hours or, or an hour and say, okay, so right at the moment, what can you do that's going to serve you? And I usually use this when I'm in overwhelm. So even when I'm at this state of health, which is, I don't know, 50, 60%, I guess, uh, I still have those moments of overwhelm and say to myself, uh, okay, right at the moment, what can you do? What can you control? And then I take action. So what I might be able to control is I can get up and I can take the vitamins that I need to take. Or I can have a drink of water that I need to drink. Or I can have a drink of healing tea. Or I can run the bath and get in the bath. So focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. That's the message for today. And if you have any questions, please pop over to my blog. Uh, and uh, or email me on louise at getupandgoguru.com or uh, pop to, over to my Facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash getupandgoguru or hit me up on Twitter uh, and my um, handle is at getup and just an n go guru so get up and go guru so you can you can contact me in many ways and and ask me you know if you have any questions about this ask me uh, and if you're at all interested in I, I'm developing a group coaching uh, seminar series if you're at all interested in that please let me know about that too my one-on-one -on -one coaching is um, sometimes not within the budget of, um, of some people but what I'm trying to do is develop a coaching series that is well within the budget of, of people with CFS and that would be a, um, a six part or ten part series uh, in a similar vein to this but in much deeper, um, a much more depth. So I'll sign off for now Louise Bibby, getupandgoguru.com. Keep smiling, I'll talk to you soon.